Yes, uh, my name is Edwin Beche. I'm your host, uh, founder and CEO of Helen Technology. Today, I have an awesome guest. His name is Daniel Alphon. Uh, Daniel uh, is, the, is an author uh, for the book called Build a LinkedIn Profile for Business Success. And also another thing is like uh, I wanted to talk to Daniel is because Daniel is one of the first LinkedIn members. People are the, the one of the first people who, who ever joined LinkedIn. Daniel, welcome to the show, man. How are you? Ed, thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be oh, part oh. of the headliners. <laughs> Good, good, good. Daniel, so for some reason, I think you might have two windows open. You have the the LinkedIn and then the uh, the this stream. If you can close the uh, the LinkedIn, it might be it might have some delay a little bit. Uh, just close the LinkedIn. Let's see if it's gonna bring a little bit. Okay. Daniel, you can hear me. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes, I can hear you. Okay. Let me try and, and close some others. Yeah. Um. Because it's picking up some feedback from the other one, and then they become like a delay. So you should just leave like the restream on it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now yeah. I've closed most of them. Is that? Perfect. Yes. Okay. That's perfect. I can hear you and your voice, and I can hear you clear. Yeah. Yes, Thank Daniel. You. Welcome to the show. How are you, my friend? Thank you very much. Ed. The headliner yeah. is wrong. Awesome, awesome. And I know Daniel, you're in you in Israel right now, right? Yes, sir. Awesome. And what time is it over there? It's 6 30 and uh it's a beautiful place, almost like Wilmington. Wil Wilmington, no, no, no. <laughs> I doubt it, I doubt it. Um, and I know like um I haven't been there and hopefully one day I will get to, to travel there. And I hear it's just a beautiful, beautiful place to visit. And um, if I was to travel, where would you suggest for me to travel? Like, what, what, where would you want me maybe to be like, hey, you should visit this place is next? Wow, well, Ed, um, you should double the, the length of your stay before I even uh, answer that question. Because uh -huh. everywhere, you, everywhere you walk, you find history, food, and people, and it's an it's an amazing place. Uh -huh. The size is really the size of New Jersey, uh -huh. so you can pick one place and, and travel for an hour and two. Yeah. Up to the Galilee, uh, Jerusalem, Tel Aviv, nightlife, uh, restaurant, foodies, uh, amazing cultures, amazing histories. Probably the, the must-have sites would be Jerusalem, mm -hmm. uh, Lake Tiberias, Northern Galilee, if you'd like, and Tel Aviv to uh, chill out and 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 you know music and and, and stand up is is probably stronger in Tel Aviv than in the uh, in the north or Jerusalem. You know what's funny? Like just talking just a little bit about that. Like normally when someone is traveling, you're thinking about the food you're going to enjoy in that area, right? So what I have never seen, I don't know what kind of food it is, right? Is it just same like American food? Is this like what kind of food is it? Because normally if you travel, you know, like, oh, you're going to get some um, uh, Mexican food. You're gonna get some French food. You're gonna, you know, like kind of, it's like Italian food. Kind of, what is it? Like, is it what kind of food is that? Do they say? <laughs> don't don't tell me Burger King, man. <laughs> no, okay. So 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 let's dive into things that are more exotic than than Burger King. No offense to Burger King. Yeah, yeah. Um, because people uh, emigrated to Israel from around a hundred countries. We have an amazing number of cuisine within a couple of uh, square miles. So yeah. you'd, you would have Yemeni cuisine that, it, that you're unlikely to, to, to taste anywhere else in the world. And obviously the, the, the usual Italian cuisines and Thai cuisine, the number of sushi restaurants in Israel yeah. is the second to Tokyo. Wow. Okay. And we were really a small country. No, uh, we can't compare it to, to anywhere else. Uh, um, amazing sort of food, lots of uh, vegan food, lots of uh, burger uh, stands, lots of amazing places you can discover walking in, in street food, mm -hmm. uh, but also chefs that have, uh, that have opened restaurants uh, worldwide and, and you can stay for a month and never eat the same sort of food and enjoy and discover all sorts of amazing cuisines. Man, I'm looking for the day to, you'll visit us. Yes, yes, definitely, definitely. I love trying new different food. 
So Daniel, let's do this. Um, let's create um, like a background for, for, for people to kind of understand to learn a little bit about you, right? As one of the probably first member, uh, would you say, are you one of the first Italians, like maybe like a thousand, a hundred or first LinkedIn members, the people who discovered LinkedIn first? Wow. Okay. So, so let's say this today, when we, when we chat, LinkedIn has over 800 million users worldwide. Hmm. And according to LinkedIn statistic in September, 2022, each second, three people sign up somewhere, yep. somewhere around the world. So it's a growing platform. I joined in early, I joined in early 2004. So yep. I, uh, there was a, a there was a way for us to know by by the uh, old URL what number what was it, but I, I no longer remember. I wasn't one of the very first, but it was still a new thing. Yeah, and um, and it has grown by leaps and bounds since 2004, as you know. Yeah, probably probably it was facing company like Career Builder people because people probably compare compare LinkedIn Career Builder kind of type, right? You're like, why would I go on LinkedIn? I should just stay on Career Builder or website like that. You're right. The objections always varied, but but the, mm. it, it was the, the concept of social wasn't really a thing back then. Mm. The, the, the concept of connecting was was not easy for people to grasp initially, and uh, a major difference between today and 2004 is that although LinkedIn is a powerhouse for recruiting, mm. if you're a business owner it's the place to be. It's the business network that is the strongest in the world with the strongest vibes and, and demographics that are very appealing to anyone in business. If you look at it, actually, so LinkedIn um, was first, um, was first before Facebook, like by two years at least, because LinkedIn was created in 2002 and then 2004 was Facebook created, right? So that's kind of like, wow, this is like really kind of something there. Like if you, you you did not know the history of it, it's always, it's, it's funny. Like you figure, wow, LinkedIn. But again, you turn around, you see uh, Facebook has way more uh, users than LinkedIn. And I guess with the interaction also on LinkedIn, is, is it is it two different platform? Like you look at Facebook, it offers something way different than what LinkedIn offers. And where people sometimes get mad and be like, hey, don't bring this stuff to LinkedIn. This is not Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> yes. yeah. You're absolutely wise. You're absolutely absolutely right. It's a wise uh, distinction. You you don't usually do what you do on Facebook is no not really appropriate on LinkedIn. And, and every now and then you see uh, some TikTokization of LinkedIn, people trying to share th stuff that is uh, not uh, business related and not career related. Yeah. Uh, and many of us frown upon this, frown upon this and we can uh, control our feed. So whenever you see something like that and you no longer or you're no longer interested in, in uh, seeing what that person shares, you can simply unfollow that person or even report yeah. that if it's... Um, yeah. violent or something you don't want to, to, to do. And the worst thing to do would be to comment. Like, I don't want to see this. Simply because the algorithm would say, Ed is interested in this. Let's show Ed more of that stuff. So you want it to downplay this, but the algorithm understand that you're actually eager to see more of that. So never comment on something you don't want to see yeah. because LinkedIn will try to, sh to serve you more of that yeah. content. <laughs> okay. okay. So let's do this, um, mm -hmm. Daniel. Um, then I'm, hopefully I'm saying Alphon, right? Alphon. Yes. Okay. I'll, I will try to, to mention your 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 uh, <laughs> name. <laughs> yes. Um, let's 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 give um, listener or viewer just a little bit of history, like like where you grew up and who's Daniel. Can you give summarize just a little bit? Like where did you grow up? Did you grow up in in Israel? Did you grow up in Saudi Arabia? US, where, what kind of childhood did you have? <laughs> I had a very happy childhood. I was uh, raised in France and in Israel. I was born in France. I moved to Israel when I was a small kid, four, year old, four years old. 
Um, my parents returned to France when I was 16, so we turned with them. And when I was 23, I decided to return to Israel. And since then, Israel is his home. So I traveled around the world and I enjoy it, but, it, but I've stayed in Israel ever since. Do you speak French? Personne n'est parfait. On peut, on peut continuer en français si vous voulez. On peut même parler en hébreu. Nous pouvons parler en hébreu. I don't know what you said, but I think you meant a little bit. <laughs> I know I, I kind of skipped um, French. They used to teach us in school. I should have, if our focus probably would have been better. So I got stuck. I like, uh, bonjour, je m'appelle Edouard. Kind of, that's it. <laughs> Bravo, mais c'est très bien. C'est très bien. Yeah. Yeah. You don't need more, more than that to order in a restaurant. So maybe know, after know, right? <laughs> uh, That's good. So let's talk LinkedIn. Um, you're a LinkedIn specialist, right? right. So, yes. um, and, and I know like you have like a lot of different experience from, you know, uh, you've been in this kind of almost kind of business development and consulting just kind of for years, right? Until you got into this uh, LinkedIn training people, right? You're training either LinkedIn a trainer and a speaker, right? How did you end up getting into, in, apart from just being part of the LinkedIn, learning about the LinkedIn, how did you end up getting into this LinkedIn um, specialist? Okay, I'll start by saying, Ed, that I've done all the possible LinkedIn mistakes mm -hmm. that there are. I simply had the, the opportunity or the luck to perform those mistakes early on. And I managed to learn from those mistakes and then start helping others. I held a sales position in 2006 and LinkedIn one night showed me the name of the person I needed to reach out to. Mm -hmm. And back then this slashed a third of my sales cycle because I no longer had to waste a lot of time just to try and identify the name of the right person within the organization. So that helped me beat my quota. And that's the moment I realized this is an interesting concept. <laughs> and I, want, I wanted to check under the hood and to, to, to see what the, the powerful engine looks like. And then I started helping friends and those friends asked me to train their sales force. And at one point you wake up and you say, okay, this is what I'm doing. Let's drop everything else and let's specialize. And I'm very lucky and I'm very um, thankful for specializing in this. I had no idea it would become such an amazing platform. Okay. So with, with, the, with the LinkedIn, you're talking about it become like a, a place where you can use to generate leads, right? Uh, generate leads by hitting your quarters. Is it? So it become tricky a little bit. Um, so... Like, like, okay, take example. I get a lot of uh, requests. Someone will say, hey, Ed, I love what you're doing with your company. We would love to add you to my to my network. And I was like, oh, this person seems genuine. I accept it. And then next thing, as soon as I accept it, I see a whole, like, like thousand words <laughs> that they send me. They're trying to sell me something that I did not ask that I was looking for. How do you avoid things like that as a, either person who's, who's looking to be a lead generation or a person looking for genuine network? Excellent. It's an excellent question. And I wish more marketers ask themselves that very simple question. Mm -hmm. Because if, if we cringe when we get those sorts of invitations and we know that the minute we accept the invitation, we're going to get a pitch that is often not relevant for us, then it's not a good way to grow our business. So what I would suggest is this. First, have a connection strategy. That could mean you want to ask yourself in three years' time, Ed, would you like to be the most connected or would you prefer to be the best connected? And the truth is you can grow your business by being the best connected or by being the most connected. Many business owners don't want to make a choice because instinctively we want both quality and quantity and instead of making a choice we try to aim for both our job is to tell them that they're mutually exclusive you have to make up your mind you have to make a choice you cannot have your cake and eat it so either quality or quantity what could you do with incoming invitations if you don't know that person well that's easy i can share my screen show you how to reply to such an invitation so you don't have to pollute your network. You don't have to do something like that. What you have to do 
simply reply to that person mm -hmm. and say thank you very much mm -hmm. for the invitation could i be of help thank you very much ed that's what i would send yeah so yeah if the person replies and, and says i want to work with you and that's interesting and genuine by all means communicate with that person and build a meaningful relationship with them but you don't have to accept the invitation you have to make up your mind whether you want quantity or quality yeah but but the, the thing is like now you you get like really like you would read someone's profile like let's say hey they, they and you will see like they say like i'm the cfo of this company or i'm yes. the ceo of this company whatever and as soon as soon you accept that's what it is so how do you pick to know this is the right like if like let's say i know for sure you have gotten this someone have reached out to you hey daniel uh i can show you how to generate leads on, on linkedin and you're like yeah. have you read my profile like you know like like literally these people like sending how do you um apart from that probably that's easy to avoid you just delete and then you don't ignore um but when someone mm -hmm. I, I know like you mentioned it is either you want the best or the most or quality or quantity so it's like you cannot get both of them at the same it's, it's like a very thin line you have to decide you want the best in quantity i mean in, in quality or you want to be the most in quantity like where you don't care and i have seen that too uh i have seen some some friends like they have they have like i open up their page they have twenty thousand followers mm -hmm. right and then they post something and then I see two people interacted. And I'm like, what's the point of having 20,000 connection or followers by if nobody, is, is it, can you, can you go into detail? How do you, for someone that, is that, is that part of those people to say, it's just quantity and most, but it's not best and not quality? Right. Um, I think many entrepreneurs and many business owners start with a quality approach. And in real life, most of us have some real life network. Okay, we, we've worked with hundreds of people, if not more. And some of those people are uh, present on the LinkedIn platform. So yeah. usually people would start with that. And then they would hear that they need to grow their network and they would connect with all sorts of people they no longer know, thinking they would get exposure. But what they end up receiving is what you said. They may have 10,000 virtual connections with very little uh, engagement and, and zero business. So the metrics that count should not be the LinkedIn metrics. I'm going to share my screen again. The, the link, the, the metrics that count should be your business metrics. Okay. If, if you think about the LinkedIn metrics, this could be the number of connections you may have, the number of views you may have, the SSI score, but as a business owner, you need to focus on the right side on the business metrics. Yeah. Has LinkedIn helped you? Is LinkedIn helping you grow your revenues? Does LinkedIn provide you with new orders? If this is what LinkedIn brings you, then you're on, on the right track. But if at the end of the day, all you say is, I have a gazillion connections, and you cannot show how those are translated into revenues, well, then you, orders. Mm -hmm. yeah. you are chasing vanity metrics. You don't, yeah. Consider LinkedIn to be like a black box. Mm -hmm. Is LinkedIn providing you with inquiries that can grow your business? For example, you may uh, use LinkedIn to get to get the word up about the super app, uh, Helen, and, yeah. and if two franchisees reach out to you in the next 30 days and one of them becomes a franchisee, then you would know if you've done that action on LinkedIn that LinkedIn has helped you grow your business. And this is way, way more important than a gazillion connections that you cannot translate into business. So what sort of business metric is yeah. important for you? Okay, perfect. perfect. So with your with your training, um, helping, do you focus? Um, do you focus on like on like CEO of company? Do you focus like on a company where you say, hey, where's your sales team? Where's your marketing team? Or do you focus like on just a CEO or individual? How do you focus on helping people to leverage LinkedIn? Okay, uh, there's a whole variety of business owners. And I think that the sweet spot would be probably solopreneurs and SMBs. 
<laughs> so it could be a small team, it could be consultants, it could be people trying to grow their, their solopreneurship into having maybe a staff of five of 10 or, or 15. Uh -huh. um, when you get, you know, to a Fortune 2000 sort of company, it's a different ball game. And, and that is not my specialty. I respect those people. I've, I've uh, worked with some of those companies, but it's much slower to see uh, results. And there are many people involved in the process. Or is you, if you work with a solopreneur, then the moment they decide they want to move that ship to the right, the ship moves to the right. And you see faster results. So my sweet spot is probably SMBs or consultants uh, corporate refugees, people who have worked with co corporate America for a decade or 20 years and have become consultants or start out their own business when they're 40 or, or something like that. Okay, okay, perfect. You also talk about, that's where I, I got my head scratching. You talked about treat your profile, your LinkedIn profile, like a website, not a uh, cover letter or CV, like a resume or whatever. What do you mean? Can you, can you go in detail on that? I love that question. Thank you very much for that question. So let's say yeah. this. Mm -hmm. If you're an entrepreneur, if you're a business owner, then forget about the job aspect of LinkedIn because you're not after a job as an employee. And simply consider your LinkedIn profile to be an extension of your website. And ask yourself three questions. One, who's your ideal reader on LinkedIn? Two, what action would you like those people to perform once they visit your profile? And three, are you providing those ideal readers with the right sort of information in the right order at the right time for them to understand that Ed is part of the solution? And for those people, it's not very important for them to know whether you worked for uh, um, DC private cars until 2015 or 2013. What is important is what you bring to the table now and how has, has the, this experience helped you improve and come up with the idea of ride sharing on the one hand, grocery de 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 deliveries, travel uh, of flight uh, reservation. Everything is also uh, um, due to your background, but the background should help people understand why you're part of the solution. And by uploading a, a nice banner like you have and by tweaking the headline, yeah. you make it all about them. It's much more relevant than seeing that you're the CEO or the co-founder of XYZ Unknown. Oh, that's, I love it, I love it. So in a way, so you help uh, people not just generate leads and, and also kind of kind of creating their profile, like you're saying, the, make it look like it's like a website continuation of your website so it kind of when someone reads it it i, I love it. it in my head i was going back and forth i'm, to, I'm like this is awesome actually, actually we're gonna have to talk more because i need i need help to clean up my, my <laughs> i need help to clean up my profile and, and i know you mentioned also about something so one of the of the things that always throw me off um uh, like the profile headline, right? So as soon as I see someone say like the same thing I was mentioning to you, hey, yes. I want to be, I want to, I want to have you on my network, right? They might say yeah. I'm a CFO, I'm a CEO of this company. I want to have you on my network. And I click and I go to their profile and I read their whole headline. That's mm -hmm. actually always give me an idea if this person, I want to be part of it. Because as soon they say like, or I help people generate like leads or bring this and this and then help small business acquire business. So it's like that kind of scares me because I'm already thinking like, oh, as soon as I accept this person is going to send me a pitch. So how do you avoid like you need the network, but at the same time, you you worried about people might read your title and they'd be like no this is a salesperson i don't want to be involved with or okay. how do you structure that like the headline why is it the headline important okay so let's break what you said into maybe two two smaller questions one why is the headline important and then how to tweak it in a way that would not frighten or, or, or scare the, the people you'd like to to reach yes the reason that the headline is is important is that it's the most uh, precious real estate we see on your profile. Imagine I run a search 
okay. and I would find 2,500 results, I see only that element. I see your, your profile photo and then the text. Does that headline make me interested in discovering more about you? Or th does this turn, it, turn me off? And you can decide that your headline will be the traditional headline or something else. But, but many people will see the headline. And based on that headline, they will decide whether they click and they start engaging in reading actually your profile or they'll move away. You mentioned a very uh, relevant point about scaring or, or potentially scaring away some, some people. Let, let me ask you this. What is the best source of business for consultants? Is it advertising or is it could it be referrals? Based on your business experience, what would you say? I would say referral. Okay. So on, on my end, what I've seen is that referrals are responsible for most of my revenues because someone who's, who says you need to speak with Ed brings you a prospect that is warmer. That prospect is often less price sensitive and they're often ready to engage with you and start working with you. And by the end of, of your work with you, they may even send additional referrals your way if you serve them right. So let's go back to, to LinkedIn now. You don't have to grow your network. You have to grow your business. What does that mean? You may have 100 connections, 80 connections, people you know well. And then you run a search and you see 5 or 15 interesting prospects. And add if you connected with people you knew well, you, LinkedIn will show you the name of those mutual connections. So imagine I see the name of a, a, um, a mutual connection and it was someone you hosted on the headliners. So if I speak to that person and I ask them, would they know you well enough to make the introduction, they are likely to say yes. Yeah. And then I would get a, a few seconds of your precious attention, not due to my name because you don't know my name, but you would know theirs. So even if you only connect with people you know, all you have to do is run a search, focus on the second degree contacts, look at the mutual connections. And if you build your network and you help people when you don't need anything from them, yeah. Yeah. then you're entitled to ask them for a meaningful introduction. And meaningful introductions can mean a lot of business. You don't need 10,000 clients usually. Okay, you can you can focus on five super clients and those will help you grow your business and 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 the one of the best sources to get those sort of clients is referrals, just like you said. Yeah. 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 Oh, so, sorry, sorry, I'm yeah. hearing from the echo again. I don't know if you open the two windows. Um well anyway. So question also, um you talk about so like this question also had my head scratching again. The one you say uh, is about picking which one, which page to focus. Either should mm -hmm. we focus on our company page or like our individual page? Mm -hmm. And I was like, Ooh, that's a good, that was a good, I don't know. I got stuck. I was like, I don't know which one to like. Should we, so which one? What what do you what what's your advice there in focusing either company page or the the uh, individual page? Because I have both. So. Absolutely. So let me ask you this. If you have less than thousands of employees, mm -hmm. I would focus on your individual profile. Now, why is that? That One of the particularities of LinkedIn is that the, the business page, the, the page itself, is not very important. Mm -hmm. The lead generation that, you will, that you'll do is only based on your profile. The, the, the page is pretty static. And you don't, you, you can uh, uh, create it, you can check it every six months, share once something there, but usually most people don't follow company pages. Okay, you have close to 11,000 followers, and the total of the number of companies you follow, can you guess? Um, <laughs> I don't know. Ed, hear me out 13 companies. A grand total of 13 companies. And you're a LinkedIn powerhouse and you have 11K followers. So the proportion between the number of, of pages you follow and the number of individual, individual connections you have is amazing. And that would be the case for most entrepreneurs and most business owners. Uh -huh. 
when, when does the page become important? Once you have thousands of employees, yeah. then your page can grow your business. But initially, forget about the page, set it up, and understand that the dynamic is actually led by your individual profile. Because the average user is going to connect with ad as an individual and not follow ads page. Yeah. Ad page is for corp corporate. It's not for a, a startup. It's not when you start growing your company. Forget about the page. Yeah. Is this is this become part of a personal branding? Like you were saying, a branding for the CEO mm -hmm. and also different branding for the company. Is that is that what you what you were saying, maybe? It could be phrased that way. The, the question I would, I would ask is this. Are people calling the company and say, send me someone? Or are they asking for Ed? Now, if you're you know, a, a, a plumber company with uh, thousands of people across the US, then fine. You, I don't care who's, who you send as long as he's professional and yep. he, he lives nearby. Yep. But if people are asking for you, then your individual profile should speak to your ideal reader and the page is much less relevant. Another difference is that imagine I send you an invitation request and you accept it, or you send me in and accept it. Yeah. And for the first time, I would have access to your email and you would have access to mine. What would happen if I follow the page? Nothing. You get no information. It's like you are releasing a book on Amazon. Amazon knows who downloaded the book, but you don't hold that customer information. Mm -hmm. So your profile is likely to help you grow your business and conversion is likelier to happen outside of LinkedIn. Okay. But is it also um, in, in a way uh, where you, we have information almost kind of tied together? Like what, what scares me is you build, because I'm thinking maybe just concentrate, focus on the company, let the company be known as a branding, whatever, even with less employee with less than tell them play. And then you're looking at like, oh, maybe I focus on this, but at the same time in the, in the, in the world that we live in with this, with this console culture and stuff, it's, mm -hmm. it's always kind of scary. Like you're like, you're watching everything you're doing because as soon as you, something happened to your personal brand, it follows you, even if it's, a, it's in a personal life, not, not in a business world, something happened in a, in the, in the Facebook world, and now we matters on the LinkedIn, LinkedIn world. So how do you, is it, is it like a way uh, to, how do you, how do you prevent that? Like, I don't know, like in a way, <laughs> it's one of those kind of <laughs> touchy feeling, kind of touchy question, like how do you escape that? Okay, it's a tough question. I'll try to divide my answers into two or three points. Mm -hmm. One, you don't have to share very often on LinkedIn. And when you do, you need to remember that the platform is professional, conservative, slow. Okay, so no one is expecting ad to reply within five seconds. It's not Facebook, it's not Twitter. People measure your professionalism by, by the latest action you performed publicly on LinkedIn, whether that was two months ago or this morning, I don't care. If you did, if you had something meaningful to say, and that was two months ago, that's fine. Much, it's much better than trying to game the system and, and, and share five times a day when people will not engage with you. Yeah. They will unfollow you. Some may disconnect. Some may report you. So you don't have to share a lot. Sharing is one way to make your brand grow. It's not the only one. And it's difficult for small business owners to actually produce content. Often what you could do is curate other people's content. So you, you would find content that resonates with your ideal client and you would ask yourself, what sort of question are my ideal readers struggling with? Say I was, again, a, a, a potential franchi franchisee. So the questions I'm asking myself is, okay, what may be the down payment if I want to join Helen? And what sort of support will you provide me with training? And, and will you be here in six months? All sorts of questions that are really simple to answer. And if you provide me with that, with those sort of answers, then you, you've, you've gained my trust. And now I'm ready to jump on a strategy call or reach out to you and do something more meaningful. Yeah. 
the, the second thing I would I would mention is that there is a wave in in the in LinkedIn's privacy settings. By default, your connections get notified when you're in the news. This often can um, bring or, or echo excellent news. Okay, if you know that you're giving a TED talk tomorrow 8 a.m., then you would like people to see that. And if you're giving an interview to Forbes and that is going to be re released tonight, you do want people to know about it. But if you don't control the agenda, then even someone with your name that has done horrific things or is accused of doing horrific things, LinkedIn might send a notification to your network saying this is what it has done. So try to dive into LinkedIn's privacy settings and understand if you want to turn it on and off. My simple advice would be usually to turn it off and to turn it on only 24 hours before you know you're going to be on top of the, of the stage in something that is positive, and yeah. then you can turn it off again. So be uh, careful about it. Oh, that's that's really good to know. That's that's very good. If you have some really important, not not to spam people like, hey, let me just notify everyone, every post I put and everything. So with, with the, what what will be the sweet spot of because when you turn around, there are people who like content, content, content. Mm -hmm. Although some of this, like you will hear even like some uh, like celebrity person or whatever, it's like. Yes. It feels like every hour they post something, every hour post something. And I'm like, geez, is it, this is becoming, but again, because they are so popular, we keep getting this feed. And also they believe this content, content, because I, the more you post content, the more also LinkedIn uh, our algorithm kind of pick you up and they say, hey, this guy shares, the, the, how, what it would be the sweet spot to be like between content sharing or just an annoying person <laughs> like that's a great question okay like, so okay, how many how many <laughs> posts should we post on linkedin per day or per week or per month you see where mm -hmm. i'm getting at you don't have to do it once a week okay now, now why do i say this because there were quarters where i haven't shared anything and my business kept growing because if you share something, you simply ask, you simply have to ask yourself, why am I sharing this? Is it to blow my own horn and to say, wow, I'm, I'm God's gift to humanity? Or is it relevant for my connections? And sometimes, Ed, your network is not necessarily your audience. Your network may have been people you worked with, colleagues, partners, but now you've pivoted, you've, you're doing something else. And the third time they see that sort of content they're no longer uh, likely to engage what you could do if that's the case is share that piece of content in linkedin groups where you would find entrepreneurs or business owners or tech partners or franchisee anything that relates to your content and you would share it there without harassing your connections without shoving content down their throats you don't have to over share on linkedin Exposure is overrated on LinkedIn. Many people think that when they have a thousand connections or two thousand connections, then they're going to have a lot of exposure. Mm -hmm. The sad truth is that exposure may start with twenty-five or thirty thousand connections. Now, why is that? Because many LinkedIn users don't log in daily. They check LinkedIn every once in a while. When you send them an invitation, they may check you out. When there is an important meeting, they would look someone up. But that may be once, you know, every week. Yeah. So maybe when you share something, only 2% 2, 2 will see what it is that you share. And if you have 2,000 connections, 2% 2 or 40 people. That's not a lot. Yeah. If you have 50,000 connections, that those same two percent become a thousand people that's a tribe that's a, that could be meaningful yeah and that's one reason why you need to pick one because if you're trying to aim for both you've watered down the quality of your network without reaching significant exposure that's that's good that's good give me an example um as you know like um, i'm gonna be looking for franchisees soon yes. should i be should i be advertising franchise looking for franchisee on franchisee magazine or should i use linkedin for generating leads for for people to buy franchisee from for helen 
Excellent. So I, I wouldn't say you don't have to use franchisee, okay, the magazine. But yeah. let, let's see. Uh, let's consider the ways you can leverage LinkedIn in order to get more awareness to the franchise you're offering. If I if I understand correctly, the franchise you're offering is regional or local. Yeah. Okay. So one way to look at it is to have a, a U.S. map and say, okay, we've covered. Uh, Southern California, we've covered the, the uh, uh, Quad Cities, we've covered uh, New York, now I'm looking into uh, uh, Miami. And what you could do is try to find Miami focus groups where you would share the sort of content and you would, you would say, I'm looking for a Miami-based franchisee, this is what I offer. This is only going to be shown to people who have joined that Miami group. That's one way to look at it. Also, so you're talking about as not a post, but more like an advertisement, right? I would, because otherwise, I would groups, they're not going to allow you to just post something on their group, right? Because Most of them could. Most of them will. Mm -hmm. So you need to identify those sort of groups. You need to join them ahead of time. And then you can basically, say, you, can, you, can, you should monitor what happens in the group. And then share what you have or even reach out to the group owner or manager and asking them you should read the group rules. For most groups, you would be entitled to do that. Mm -hmm. If you're unsure, if the group rules uh, make it like uh, something you're not sure about, reach out to the group manager, ask that, ask that group manager, and without their blessing, don't do it. But in most cases, you would be able to do it. And the second thing you could do is ask yourself, could I provide the sort of evergreen content that is top of funnel that my potential franchisees are asking themselves? And then you would be you be, you would become known for the person who educates people about the benefits of franchise. First time franchise, okay? Say I, I, I uh, now uh, got a lot of money and I'm not sure whether I should start my own business or, or maybe become a franchisee. And if I become a franchisee, should I work with Helen or Burger King? Yeah. So you can yeah. say, what are the advantages of working with Burger King? And what are the advantages of working with Helen? Because frankly, if some of the people would be more attracted to Burger King, they may disqualify themselves and you don't want them to reach out to you because you're offering something totally different yeah yeah so if you edu educate them in a, a truthful way you would not bad mouth burger king you would say if you're looking for a system that has been uh, blah, 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 this is the a, a right franchise for you if you're interested in a growing 1.1.5 trillion dollar industry that is largely untapped this is what helen can offer you and then maybe a, a percentage of those people will be likelier to engage with you, but they are much more interesting than people who would become Burger King franchisees. Perfect. Question, you, you speak about, um, you, you talk about like uh, our profile to make them customer friendly. Um, before, before you jump in there, like I was thinking, if for someone who's an employee of a certain company and someone who's, a, uh, because the, maybe there's different, you would maybe an employee in a, uh, not in a management management position, but then there are people who are in management position, then you have CEO. How can you differentiate their profile like on LinkedIn? In, in a way to kind of capture either as an employee, maybe to capture like maybe the next employee to be like, hey, this guy, I like what he has on his profile. How how do you, because as an employee, you're not going to care about to customize your, your profile to be cu uh, customer friendly, right? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. it, it boils down to the same question. Who's your ideal reader? So let's mention the employees. If you're an employee, the ideal reader may be the next hiring manager you'd like to work for. So you ask yourself, what sort of company am I interested in? What size, uh, what metro area am, am I looking at? What vertical am I looking at? And how can I show anyone who's hiring for my specialty understand that I'm part of the solution? The, the question remains, who's your ideal reader? But if you're an employee, you, the ideal reader becomes the hiring manager that 
can reach out to you and say, Ed, I'd like you to become our COO because we're growing our business and we need someone with experience that uh, um, uh, suits, suits you. And if you're a solopreneur, then your ideal reader may, may be either a tech partner or a, a client or a prospect. Yeah, that's, that's great. And uh, um, I, get, I guess I was trying to, uh, in my head, I was kind of going all over the place. I was kind of um, kind of thinking too, as if as 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 I cannot just define that. But anyway, I have another question that I was thinking too. Like, um, I guess what's the, like the upside, the upside or downside of connecting with so many people? Uh, mm -hmm. Do you understand what a, what will be the kind of upside or downside kind of connect with with so many so many people? Cool. So if you're into quantity and you understand that you need to re to reach thirty thousand connections, mm -hmm. then you need to connect with many people. And the greatest upside is exposure. When you share something and you have thirty five thousand connections, even if it's two percent, that's a sizable amount of eyeballs. So that's great. Mm -hmm. The disadvantage is the, la the lack of trust, because if I look at you and LinkedIn shows me that we, we have mutual connections and I reach out to someone and I ask them about you and they cannot say anything meaningful about you, then I'm less likely to reach out to you. OK, so I, I see that Jason uh, Sircon is, is a mutual connection of ours. Yes. If I reach out to Jason, he's not going to say Ed who? Is going to say, yeah, you need to speak with Ed. Yeah. But Im Ed, imagine that I would have Jason and five other people. You would not be there to say, ask Jason. The other five are people I don't really know. Mm -hmm. There is no hierarchy. So I reach, I look at those names and I may decide to ask Jane Doe. She's going to say, Ed Hood. She's not going to say anything negative. But if I speak with Jason, the end of my conversation with Jason is likely to be me reaching out to you. Mm -hmm. And that's the, the, the advantage of connecting with many people is exposure. And the downside is the lack of trust. Because if I ask many people that are connected with you and they say nothing meaningful about you, then you haven't really leveraged those people when it counts. When I wanted to start doing business with you, yeah. they said, no, I have no idea connection meaningful connection that's the thing you go back to quality and best right yeah. <laughs> you, you were you were asking me something uh beforehand about employees or um people yes. in business yes so yes. I, I, let me try and 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 provide a, a different question who's your focus in the next six months because maybe today you're an employee and you will only start on your own in 2023. That's fine. So you don't have to try to, to cater to everyone. Focus on people who interest you now. That may be the next hiring manager. And when you decide to strike on your own and, uh, and own your business or become a franchisee or do something else, then you swap everything. You move the employee-related information to the backstage and you share and you're sharing the information that is relevant to your business. It's very difficult to try and please everyone. If you try to please everyone, you end up pleasing really no one because everyone, the hiring manager is looking for very specific skills. Mm -hmm. And the business partner is looking for something totally different. So you don't show them everything and you ask them to choose. You have to call the shots. You have to say, this is what I'm interested in now. That's the information that is relevant for you. And if you pivot in three months time, or six months time, simply change that. So your profile is up to date and shows what you're interested in the, in the next six months, not your track record, not, not your history, but what you're in, interested in looking ahead. Yeah. Yeah. What, what would you suggest also for people that use LinkedIn? And I know you mentioned the area, like sometimes people just look, they check their LinkedIn maybe once a week. Yep. What will be a perfect the sweet spot for people to be like hey check your linkedin don't just mm. ignore it because i was one of those people like i created a linkedin and and then for years uh i never touched it i put it in there and i never really looked at it and then i went to look i got a bunch of people asking for for connection requests and some people email me 
And mm -hmm. what will be the sweet spot? Is it does maybe we can also loop around? Like we can we can talk about like exposure is overrated on LinkedIn, right? And and the people are like always like kind of thinking like what could it be more important than exposure, right? So if okay. we can loop those two questions, maybe that'd be awesome. <laughs> Like the spot. Right. Like Let's try it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you ask about the sweet spot in, in terms of maybe of time. So I'll, I'll, I'll say this. I would ask you, Ed, what is the minimal amount of time you think you can dedicate to LinkedIn on a weekly basis for the next six months? And you're allowed to say anything, even five minutes. If you don't have five minutes for your career a week, then forget about LinkedIn. But now you say, okay, I, have, I can dedicate to LinkedIn an hour a week, or I can dedicate 15 minutes a week. And I'll ask you again, can you commit to that even in three months' time? And if you're unsure, then I would say, okay, instead of 15, let's do 10. And now that you have the minimal amount of time, because consistency is so important on LinkedIn, you may have much faster results and stronger results if you commit to 10 minutes a week for six months, You'd have better results than someone binging LinkedIn for a whole weekend and forgetting about the platform for three months. Yeah. So number one, consistency. What is the minimal amount of time you can stick to? Now, let's put uh, meaningful uh, actions into that time. If you only have 10 minutes or if you have an hour, what could you do? I would advise you to start by checking the notification tab on LinkedIn. And that is where LinkedIn will show you things that your network is up to. What could that be? It could be that someone important, a meaningful connection of yours has uh, either been promoted to become something else and then they have updated their profile or they may have a, a birthday today. So the, the secret now is to strengthen your relationship with those VIPs, with those people that, that matter to you because if you forget about them and you only ask for their help when you need it 10 months down the road, they're not, nobody loves it when you remember them only when you need them. So that's a very great opportunity to, to, to reconnect with those people. Yeah. And if, if they're important, what I would advise our listeners to do is to actually leave LinkedIn. So I would say I would notice that Jason's birthday is coming up or I would notice that someone has been promoted. And what I would do is go off LinkedIn and I would message them either uh, uh, via their email or something else. So say June 24th arrives, and guess what? June 24th is your birthday. Yep. So instead of messaging, messaging you or saying happy birthday, I would I may be uh, number 68 doing the same thing. Uh, what I would actually do is leave LinkedIn, go to my email, reply to a message you sent, and ask how you've been. And I'm not sure I'll get a reply, but I know it's more meaningful than hitting the cookie cutter, happy birthday ad, and moving on. You know what? I'm, I'm going to hold you into that. I'm going to wait for my birthday next year. <laughs> Lazy, ladies and gentlemen, there's a countdown until June 24th. I know. I know we'll June, June 25th, I'm going to send an email. Hey, Dan, you're supposed to send me a happy birthday <laughs> <laughs> okay, so so we're trying to find a sweet spot. The sweet spot starts with the notification where you see uh, meaningful events happening to your network. Yeah. I'd like to give yeah. another example, not one of a birthday, but it's someone updating their profile. Okay. Say yeah. you see that one of your connections has updated their, their profile, okay? Mm -hmm. And they say that they now have, have moved to do something else. Maybe Michael DeLon has updated the profile and his profile and you see now something else. The default would be to say congrats, to send a congrats. But the thoughtful thing to do would be to actually visit Michael DeLon's profile and to, to scroll down and to see whether that update means he's just started this today or he's updated it today, but he started this six months ago. Because if uh, he started this six, six months ago, it doesn't make sense to say congrats. You would say, what are you up to? And yeah. taking yeah. those 20 seconds may mean more to your relationship with those people than be the 143rd person 
congratulating them for a new achievement or something else. Take the time when it matters yeah. because it's, it's your relationships with people can bring you more business, more career opportunities than anything else. I, I have seen this like um, like it'll be my birthday and, and I will get so many inbox and then they become like just like on on LinkedIn, get so many inbox, happy birthday, happy birthday. And then of course, those are the generic people like really what they're just clicking happy birthday and it goes happy birthday and goes, they're not really even typing. Very few that will type in happy birthday and I hope you enjoy your weekend, blah, blah, blah. So that's good. Um, I guess one of the thing also I was thinking too, like I have tried to hire people through LinkedIn where someone will apply and I'm like, wow, this person is like perfect they will they will be a good fit and then on linkedin it has an option where they they apply like automatically so you match it you message them like hey i would like to set up a meeting with you like an introduction or whatever and then they disappear you never see them right <laughs> and, and it'll be like a month later they're like hey so i missed your message and i'm like oh that was like a month ago like i was looking to connect with you like a few days after you apply so I guess it's part of those people that don't if you if you don't have time to check LinkedIn, you might as well just get out of it kind of type, right? Um, yeah, if it's if it's important for you, let me suggest something else. If you got a message or an application through LinkedIn, the LinkedIn messaging is not the best robust uh, part of LinkedIn. It's difficult to reply to a message you send me. So if it counts and if it matters and, and you may say that out of 10 messages, only one counts for you, and that's fine. But when it counts, I would actually leave the LinkedIn platform and email those people. Now, if a candidate gets an email and doesn't reply within a month, you don't want to hire him. But yeah. many, yeah. many employees or many uh, candidates sure. will reply within hours or minutes. And then you can interview them. You can hire them. You can, you can move to the next step. Cause so it's like get out of Instagram on the Insta, what is it? LinkedIn and the email them, get their email, email. I know we kind of like, we, but we, we, but go off now, but like, let's do the yeah, last question and then we can kind of summarize it. Yes. What will be, and I know probably you have touched a little bit, probably this, what will be a perfect strategy to connect with people, with new people on LinkedIn? Should I be, like sometime I'm like, okay, I need a, I need to have a network of uh, maybe like you're talking about franchise developer, right? Like for me, my company, I need mm -hmm. to find some franchise developer just to connect with them because when I start franchising, I can put out the word like, hey, Helen started franchise. What will be a best strategy for me to reach out to new connections? I may surprise you, but I don't think you need to work hard. So hear me out. This is what I would say. I would actually write down a message explaining wh who uh, is the best franchisee from your perspective. And I would go to LinkedIn's homepage and I would say, help needed. Helen is growing. This is what I'm looking for. If you know someone who could be interested, please tag them. So you would not connect with people. You have a, a large network already. And, and within your network, some of those people may be intrigued about it and actually message you and say, tell me more about it. That's excellent. But you're ask, actually asking them to refer someone else. So mm -hmm. I may not be the right fit, but hey, I know someone who's exactly the right fit for you. And it would be easier for me to take that post and share it with them or to tag Jane Doe. And when you tag Jane Doe, she would see the original post, what is valid, Helen offering what who's will be a good candidate and that can takes you can, can take you literally 10 minutes because you know yeah. who you're looking for yeah. and as if more people comment on your post your post can become extremely viral perfect, perfect. start with start with your backyard start with your the sandbox you already have you know you don't have to chase the moon start with this if you have enough franchisees then consider something else. Daniel, thank you so much, my friend, for adding value to my listener. So quick question. Let's summarize, uh, like, who's Daniel and what does Daniel do and how people can find you uh, 
if they need help with LinkedIn. Thank you very much. Daniel is a LinkedIn specialist. That's what I do. So help uh, uh, people leverage the LinkedIn platform better. Uh, the best way to do it would be to visit danielalphon.com. They, they would find all sorts of content. They would be able to book a one-on-one -on -one call. And the last thing about me is that Daniel is um, waiting for Ed, for Ed to visit Israel so he can uh, <laughs> show <a couple laughs> <Definitely. of> <laughs> Definitely, definitely. Yes, like uh, you just, just in my own word, uh, Daniel is the person who can teach people how to, uh, like a strategy, how to approach people, uh, LinkedIn better than spamming people and by just sending people like a whole long pitch and people just end up deleting you because they don't want to talk to you at all. Hey, thank you so much, Daniel, again. And definitely uh, is on my to-do list, on my travel list to go to Israel. I just want to, like, I really, really want to go there. So hopefully my friend will get to, to drive around or just show me around there. Thank you so Ed, much again, Daniel. Thank right. you very much. And thanks for allowing me to be part of the headliners. Yeah, 